You're watching World News Today with Jonathan Charles. Welcome back. Cambodia has been struggling to rebuild itself since the horrors of the late 1970s and 80s. Then, as many as two million Cambodians died under the radical communist Khmer Rouge leader Pol Pot. Now the country is slowly beginning to bring those responsible for the killing fields to justice as part of a UN-backed tribunal. Well, filmmaker Stanley Harper followed one divided Cambodian family over 18 years as they struggled for reconciliation and normality after the war. The resulting film, Cambodian Dreams, premieres tonight in London. And he joins me now in the studio. Very difficult film to make. What were you hoping to show through it? The... I wanted to show in the film that after the Khmer Rouge, Cambodia was once again divided in two. There were those who left Cambodia to go to the refugee camps that had been set up in Thailand, and there were those who stayed. Now, these two sides formed themselves into a faction, and they, two different factions, and they were fighting with each other. They were at war. So you can imagine coming out of the Khmer Rouge, you then come into another period of warfare with yourselves. Now, I knew about I knew the story from an earlier film I'd made for the BBC, and I realized that the big problem was going to be these two sides coming together again. Now, in the earlier film I'd made, I'd had a grandmother called Yang Cheng, and I knew that she had a daughter who was living in Cambodia who had never come to the camps. So simply what I wanted to do was I wanted to tell the story of the life in the camp through the eyes of the grandmother and her family, and the eyes in, uh, of the, the life in Cambodia through the eyes of the daughter who had never left Cambodia. And of course what we see is we see the two, we see the two very different lifestyles. One living on aid, aid dependent, kept in these prisons of refugee camps. The other one living their life in dignity, self-sufficiency as much, but great hardship because the international community had isolated Cambodia. Um, with the fall of the Khmer Rouge. So my aim was to show what it was like to both sides and then to bring them together. And I think we can actually see a clip from the film now. Let's yes. have a look. ประมาณ <laughs> So there we are, that's the daughter talking about her mother. And I think you did bring them together, didn't you, for, for the film? That point we saw yeah. was where, the, where there was the start of the reconciliation right. process, where and the that, mother and daughter were together. And that reconciliation process, do you think that's a one-off, or is that a wider trend now in Cambodia? It's a much wider trend in Cambodia, yes, it is. This is a one-off, this is one family that represents Cambodia, but in fact, Cambodia has come together. I was with someone last night and I mentioned I was living in Cambodia. The first thing that came to their mind was Khmer Rouge. Now, it's so gone past that. The, the, the country is really coming together, is building up fast economically. Um, there is more work needed to bring the country together in unity, yes, but that is happening. But the UN Tribunal, happening. of course, is bringing some people to justice now from the Khmer Rouge uh, regime for the first time. Does that help the healing process or does it redivide people? I don't think it redivides people, no. I don't think it helps the healing process either very much because I think that in Cambodia, as we see in the film, the healing process has already been done. This is the international community healing rather than I think than Cambodian people themselves. And Cambodia is a very different place even though it was 10 years ago, isn't it? It's vastly different. Cambodia changes every month. It's, it's very going ahead. It's, uh, it's nothing... The, the legacy of the Khmer Rouge certainly exists, but it's a country moving at full speed. And it may be moving at full speed, but I suppose it's very hard to shrug off the trauma of the sort of thing that people live through. Of course you can't shrug off the trauma, and yes, I mean, they live through it. I mean, what's amazing is that they are so, they have come through it so well. You know, I often say of something like 
what happened in Cambodia happened in the United States of America, you would probably have a, a country in therapy for generations. Mm. Um, the Cambodian people are now coming together very, very well as a country, as a, as a people. Mm. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. well, I look forward to seeing the film for myself. Now, that's all from World News Today. We'll be back for an hour of news and analysis at the same time tomorrow. The latest news from BBC World in a few minutes, and the latest, of course, from the New York, where the uh, stock exchange opened almost half an hour ago. The Dow Jones is currently trading in positive temperature, up by about 126 points, and that follows some huge falls earlier this week. For the moment, though, from me, Jonathan Charles, and the rest of the team, goodbye.